Now let's look at Lewis structures for molecular compounds and for polyatomic ions. So this is um, kind of a summary of, of what you do to, do, uh, to write a Lewis structure. Um, you need to start with the correct skeletal structure of the molecule. And in some ways, this is the uh, most challenging part, figuring out how are these atoms connected to each other. Um, so just kind of as a guideline, the hydrogen atoms are always terminal. Terminal means they're on the outside of the atom. They're only connected, um, they're on the outside of the molecule. They're only connected to one other atom because hydrogen atoms have one electron. They can only make one bond. And then another guideline is to put more electronegative atoms in terminal positions as well on the outside. Put the less electronegative in the center. Um, molecules tend to be symmetrical, but that's just a general guideline. After you figure out how you're going to connect them, then you need to figure out how many total valence electrons there are. So you look at all of the atoms in the molecule and you add up the valence electrons that each of them has. If you have an ion, you have to consider the charge. If you have a negative charge, you have to add electrons. If you have a positive charge, you subtract them. Then you're going to uh, dole out those electrons among the atoms. And you're going to give octets or duets for hydrogen to as many atoms as possible. Um, sometimes you can just take care of it and give everybody an octet or a duet, and other times you run out of electrons. If you don't have enough electrons, then you need to form double or triple bonds by sharing some of the lone pairs. The goal is to give everybody an octet. Except hydrogen, he gets two. So let's, let's do a, a couple of these. Write the Lewis structure for carbon monoxide. Well, this is a diatomic molecule, so writing the skeleton structure is pretty simple. There's only two atoms. They have to be connected to each other. So I'm going to write the, the carbon and the oxygen will be next to each other. It doesn't matter if you want to do it vertically or put the oxygen on the left. It doesn't matter at all. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. It's in group four. How many does oxygen have? Six. So we've got one of each, and so we have a total of ten electrons. That means we can put ten dots around this. Well, you have to have at least a single bond between each atom. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to put two electrons in there. I'm, I'm going to connect those dots. That's a bond. So that's two of the 10. And unlike doing um, atoms, for molecules, we always put them in pairs. So we'll put them in pairs. Um, so I had two. That's four, six, eight. 10. I'm just kind of going back and forth between them, trying to, trying to uh, be fair. Right? One for you, one for you, one for you. Well, 10 electrons, that's all I can do. Does either atom have an octet? No, each of them has six. Two, four, six. And oxygen has two, four, six. So that's not good. We ran out of electrons. So what we need to do is then take one of these lone pairs and share it between the two atoms. So I'm going to erase one of the lone pairs, and I'm going to stick that between. I still have 10 electrons. I'm just moving them around. And, and when drawing Lewis structures, we're not going to think about who brought the electrons and did they stay with that one or not. That's, a, that's for more advanced theories. Well, carbon still has 2, 4, 6, so the carbon's not happy. But now the oxygen has 8, so we're making progress, right? But we're still not there. That means we need to share more. So I'm going to take another lone pair and share it. So I'll put that between these guys. Now carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. We have octets for each and the correct number of electrons. 
So we have our Lewis structure. Now that's kind of messy looking, right? So you might want to rewrite that. So we have carbon and oxygen. There's a triple bond. And then each of them has a lone pair of electrons. So this is our nice finished Lewis structure. Any questions? That makes sense? Okay, H2CO. Well, we've got a few more atoms here. So we have to figure out how are we going to arrange these. The hydrogens cannot be in the center. They're, they have to be on the outside. So we have to pick carbon or oxygen to be in the middle, and then the other things are going to be attached to it. Which is more electronegative, carbon or oxygen? Oxygen, which is closer to fluorine, also answers that question. Oxygen is closer to fluorine. Oxygen is more electronegative. So that suggests that we put the carbon in the middle, and then we're going to have the hydrogens bonded to the carbon and the oxygen bonded to the carbon. For inorganic covalent compounds, we generally do not have things just in a straight line when there's more than three atoms. Now we have to figure out how many valence electrons. Well, each, each hydrogen has two. I'm sorry. There are two hydrogens. They each have one. Carbon has four. Oxygen has six. We went over that already. So that's a total of 12 electrons. So I have to make single bonds. So there's two, four, six right off the bat. I have six more that I can put around. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve out of electrons. The hydrogens are happy. They're very easy to please. One bond. So basically, they're always good. If they're part of the molecule, they're good. The carbon's OK. He's got eight. The oxygen does not. Now, you might have put the electrons over here. Then the oxygen would be happy. The carbon would not. Still, you see that you're short electrons. So we need to share more. We're going to take a lone pair and share it. Which one do you think I should share, this one or that one? The one on carbon, because if I share this one, then the carbon's going to end up with too many. Now, you could fix that, of course, but sometimes looking ahead can save you a little time. So I'm going to take this one and get rid of it there and put it in between the carbon and the oxygen. So the carbon still has 2, 4, 6, 8. Now the oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8, and everybody's good. So I'm going to draw that more nicely over here. Hydrogen, single bond to carbon single bond to the hydrogen, double bond to the oxygen, and then the oxygen has two lone pairs. Any questions? The shortage of electrons here tells us that we have to make a double bond. This is the only place we can do it, because hydrogens can't handle double bonds. Um, we'll see that carbon tends to form four bonds, one, two, three, four, and oxygen tends to form two bonds. And you can see that if you look at the uh, Lewis structure for the atoms. For carbon, you end up with four unpaired electrons. For oxygen, you end up with two unpaired electrons. And it's these unpaired <coughs> electrons that end up making the bond. So oxygen will usually make two bonds, carbon will usually make four bonds, nitrogen usually makes three bonds. There are exceptions, but that can kind of help you. Let's do a polyatomic ion. What's the name of this ion? Hypochlorite. So again, diatomic, not too hard to figure out how to connect 
whoops, we'll put the chlorine and the oxygen. So how many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven. And oxygen has six. That negative charge, do I subtract an electron or add one? Add one. It has a negative charge because it has an extra electron. So add one, and I get 14. So we'll go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Cool. We were able to just give out pairs of electrons and get an octet for everybody without making double bonds or triple bonds. As I've drawn it here, though, this is incomplete because this looks like chlorine monoxide. Um, when we have an ion, we put parentheses around all the dots, and we put the charge on the outside. And again, mastering chemistry can't handle the, uh, the brackets. Any questions? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that when we talked about atoms, but it is a very frustrating feature of mastering chemistry that it, it doesn't do brackets. You would think, with all the wonders of modern technology, that they could do that, but they haven't. Yeah, they one that's really, that it's not right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not right. Any other questions?